Well, it's the 29th day of April. No, 27th day of April. It is uh, 10 hours and 45 minutes into the day. And we have a package opening. Let's get to this quickly. The scissors will have to be used. It's uh, initially a very durable plastic in terms of the bag cover. In terms of the covering, the, the bag they initially placed it in. So it's done. So let's see what we have. Okay, good. More have come in. These are socks. This is what I was hoping for. So, good yay for that. Uh, I will be definitely using them soon. So, uh, that's it. <laughs> because we've got a lot of uh, ride vlogs to go. traffic now. It's around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It is April uh, 27th. It's uh, Tuesday. It's actually Holy Tuesday for uh, the Eastern Christians. And we're on the road. Heading over to my parents' house. I've got some work to do uh, there. I put my second office. So, uh, and I won't be riding home until the night. And there is a significant amount of windows. So, This will be a kind of, of a factor in the ride, you know, the amount of wind that there is. So, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I won't know until I play this back, but anyways, and do, do, do the editing. Uh, whether or not you can hear me or whether I've got to improve the, uh, the volume of my voice. Uh. I just finished watching Lion LeBron uh, of Lionel Nation, and the thing is, is that uh, people say, "Well, why do you watch this guy? Why, do you, why, why is he so interesting?" As well, it's not only a matter of interest; it's a matter of that you got to, as I said, you have to look at a lot of different points of view, and uh, his point of view is significantly different than from most others. <laughs> So what happens is you, you can get information uh, from him because of his points of view that you typically don't get from other people. It's rather bright out, so 
So I got my solar visor on. I fix it a little bit. The sun's right above me. So fortunately it's not in the eyes. I'll switch to the clear visor uh, later on tonight. Last night or the night before, there was a lot of wind, and it made it a little difficult to ride because it, the wind not, can, can knock the balance off. So you have to readjust for the wind. light almost over there we go other side has a left turn signal a little bit of a stall on the accelerator Pickup. The acceleration does a good job. I had to make sure that guy wasn't just going to go through. This will make the conversation a little cumbersome here. Is that the wind is one factor, and then the second factor is. You have to pay attention to so much on the road that it pulls the wind away from, as it should be. It's difficult to maintain the conversation. Here we go. To make sure the person sees you, because it is pulled right out. definitely mean broken bones if not worse. So <laughs> I'm not going fast enough that it now becomes a significant concern in terms of health and other issues. Well primarily health. I'll enjoy the ride. Uh. 
interestingly enough, a peruser on Instagram finds Bill Maher now acting more like a Republican. <laughs> I, apparently these people, you know, because they, they have all these comments to make. Uh, none of them have ever apparently read Dostoevsky, where it describes the liberal left as insane, or I should say, idiots and possessed. And insanity in many ways is a form of possession. It's kind of a way to describe. Okay, now I've got a garbage truck here. I've got to negotiate around. behind me. So, so that's actually an issue now I've kind of resolved. Right point. Get the accelerator just lightly. It's a little jerky on the accelerator today. Look at the dandelions are up. A lot of my aunties would be out picking dandelions for Horta and uh, for uh, tea.
have a conversation in mind then there's no conversation and so there's a, so obviously no uh, no talking uh. I notice on the audio this guy through because I know I'm going to be slower. He's going to want to pass me. Now once again, I don't know whether it's a girl or a guy, but he is a non-gendered pronoun. For those of you who care. And apparently this is an issue. And uh, Most people from Oxford and Harvard can't uh, figure out that he is the pronoun for man and species. And he's anthropomorphic and not gender specific. In, in this understanding, only females have a pronoun in English. And so this is restricted to English because uh, in other languages there's a neuter and a male and a female, besides a male and a female. And so what happens is that the term he acts as a neuter pronoun in the English language because it refers to anthropological man or mankind, man the species human. But apparently this is uh, lost on a large chunk of uh, people from Oxford don't seem to understand this, <laughs> so they're trying to come up with new uh, terms, and they did, but it's basically German terms anyways. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a bizarre thing because Dostoevsky wrote about this years ago, well actually in the 1800s, and he basically sort of descriptions of the uh, liberal left uh, and intellectuals weren't too flattering. I right, got a bit of traffic here, so we're gonna wait a bit. Let's go by, that should be good. Seems to clear after there. After the bus. Come on, bus dude. Go. We are clear to go. Now we are behind the bus. It'll be interesting to sort of see how we end up traveling with the bus, either behind or uh, somewhat a little bit ahead. So I won't go too fast. I'll allow the bus to sort of do what it needs to do and uh, follow at a good distance behind. about 
over the kilometers now, so he's probably about doing about at least, at least 50, not more. There's some of these patches that are sort of sunken in. The road is not exactly as smooth as it should be. But otherwise, it wasn't, that's really the only two issues uh, going uh, northbound. Southbound, is, look, there's more, there are more issues. Slow it down a little bit. We got a red light. And let's let the bus uh, pull out. Now, they're saying to my mom is because it's helping my mom up trying to walk again. And there's a lot of fear involved. And she wonders why I would sort of repeat things and talk as she's coming on the way down. And that's because uh, talking actually helps alleviate stress. And one of the biggest problems with the elderly who have fallen and need to uh, go through this rehabilitation again, they need a way to refocus their, their, their mind off their fear and on, on, on the task that they have at hand. And talking does that. Talking to the person gives them a sort of a distraction away from their fears as they're coming down the steps. But sometimes you do have to explain what they're doing to them, what, what you're doing, so they know, you know that you're not there to distract them in terms of their, their focus, but rather help them alleviate their fears as they're doing a particular exercise or, or, or making a particular step forward. Like we're going to be behind the bus for a bit. like we're going to be with the bus the whole way. I'm going to stay behind the bus as much as I can uh, because he does go faster and so I don't want to impede him and uh, the speed I'm going at is sufficient. Doing about 36, 35, 36 uh, uh, kilometers an hour. I got my phone fixed up. I was having a problem with my phone in terms of uh, dialing out and uh, getting service. But I got that fixed up today as well. Uh, did a lot of data, data transfer to my parents' house. So I got, I got, and I got the, another vlog up. I got a right vlog up for the uh, April 7th. So today's the 27th. We're just about... We're just about... Uh, 20 days out from being current. So that's not, that's not bad. I'm happy with that. So let's go. Right here we are. We're going to do. Riding the brakes a little too hard. They slightly, they slightly compressed as I was going through the intersection. And uh, almost had a stop, but not quite. Throttle control is always an issue, well, particularly when you're driving, because you don't want to press too hard, but at the same time, you don't want to press too light. You don't want the uh, car or the vehicle you're driving to stall and sort of not have any momentum forward. You need to sort of keep in with the flow of traffic as much as possible. And if you are slower, stay to the right. And I am slower, so I do that. I stay to the right. 
and I let other people pat me, I don't believe that doesn't bother me at all. Like I said, I'm not a person who has a need for speed, I'm more of a, uh, a journey guy type of guy. I like the uh, path from A to B. It's about the journey, not the destination. That's kind of where I sit on this. But the thing is, the way other so many people, you know, watching Instagram, how how freaked out people are. People are now at a point where where people people are hugging, right? And somebody calls the cop because they're hugging because they're violating social distancing. Imagine that calling the cops on someone for hugging. Because there used to be a show I used to watch called Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. This was during, uh, uh, I think, the 80s, the height of the Cold War. And there was this one guy that always used to hide in people's hedges. He, always, he thought himself to be CIA. And he was watching for uh, 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 Soviet spies. And he, he jotted down everything the neighbors did. And, and, and as when he thought something was suspicious, he called the FBI saying, my neighbors, they're doing X, Y, and Z. It's suspicious. <laughs> and it wasn't anything. It was just the usual stuff. But the thing is, we're back in the same situation. We're back in the situation uh, of the Nazi of Nazi Germany. We're back in the situation. Uh, with uh, the Cold War again. Ironically enough, it's, 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 it's these old Cold Warriors like uh, James Comey who don't want, didn't want the Cold War to end because it was a good thing. It, it, it gave them a lot of money. They had a lot of things to do. Someone's radio's on a little loud. <laughs> they got good stereo speakers. I could do that too with my ear pods, but I need to hear the traffic. is more about insurance, about money. But for myself, accidents have always been about injury. And I don't want to end up going to the hospital. I don't want to end up killing somebody or hurting somebody else. And so it was never an issue of money. It was always an issue of you need to be careful, you need to be safe. So safety became the, the, my, my paramount issue. I think this is, this is the way I operate in the lab. I mean, as a scientist, I operate safety first. And you have to be reasonable about your safety. There are certain things, you know, if you're reasonable about your safety needs, and you have a sense of what reason is, or, you know, what reasonable is, and some people don't anymore. They don't know what's reasonable. Then you stay safe. And you can do things that you would not normally do if you were terrified all the time.